Hello, welcome back to another video. It's Lydia here and I am yet again joined by lovely Anthony. Or Ant. Hello. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be doing a pickup video, um, but it's going to be of a little bit of a twist. So I haven't picked up many games the last couple of months, so I thought to add a bit more content into the video. We'd also talk about some of the games that we've played and finished as well and give a little bit of a review. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we've picked up for the last couple of months. So let's have a look at the games that we've picked up. So the games that I've picked up have been from sort of the end of Christmas um, up until the end of February. So a good couple of months, like I said, not picked up loads and loads. So yeah, without further ado, so the first couple of ones that I picked up after Christmas were Uncharted Golden Abyss for the Vita. Been meaning to pick this one up for a while, but finally saw it cheap, so thought I'd give it a go, and I've now played all the other Uncharted games, so be good to go back to this one. And we're watching the film tonight <clears throat> as well. We are, we're going to the cinema to watch the new film with um, Tom Holland in it, so we'll see what we think about that. I'm not convinced, but we'll see. <laughs> um, and then the other Vita game that I picked up at the same time was Steins Gate. This one is super cool because it actually comes with an art book as well. Um, and it wasn't too expensive. It comes in this box with the game at the top and then you can see in there, it's got the art book, which is really nice. I really, really love the anime. So I'm excited to play through this one. I have already started it, but nowhere near finished with it. So yeah, excited to play it. So what about you? Um, so one of the games I picked up was Horus, which is um, like a platformer and kind of goes back to the 80, 18, 8 and 16 bit um, era of platform games. So it's kind of quite a lot of old game references and things. And um, I've been meaning to play this for ages and then saw it got a, a physical release from Super Rare Games. So pick that up while I had chance. Nice, has it got anything with it or is it? It's just, they all of theirs they just come with, I think it's got a manual and they like come with a, a unique sticker for each one and some trading cards that I don't know what they do. I don't know, um, I'll probably end up selling them on eBay to someone mm -hmm. like everything. But yeah, excited to play that one. Mm, looks super cute. So next up, one of the games that I got was actually a gift from Ant for Christmas and it's Oddworld Apes Exodus. I'm kind of sort of looking to try and get more of these games and see how I feel about them because I know they've got quite a big cult following. So yeah, excited to play this one and it is in pretty good condition. So I've got the two discs there. It's got all the little leaflet bits in there and obviously... It's actually oh. complete in box. I know. I'm very impressed and it looks really, really nice. The leaflet's actually really nice as well. It's all in full colour, which is kind of unusual. They're normally just black and white. So, yeah, that's really nice. And I really like the artwork on them as well. I think they're super cool. I'm not going to get you a rubbish, battered copy of it for Christmas, <laughs> am I? So thoughtful. I know. <laughs> What's next up on your list? So next up on my list is uh, Ukulele and the Impossible Ra Impossible Lair. So I quite enjoyed the first Ukulele game, um, but that one's a 3D platformer, whereas this is more 2D. Some of the things that really annoyed me about the um, first game was the voice acting, or so I don't know annoying. if you can call it voice acting, but it's just the characters when they're talking making the same annoying noises repeatedly, and it does get really great. It's terrible, it yeah. does it for the whole thing as well. Yeah, it doesn't like it doesn't stop, and it almost makes you want to... I mean, I, you probably can turn it off in the settings, but that's on me, so I should have <laughs> done that. But yeah, if, if you play it, I can guarantee you'll get annoyed with that, but it's... Um, made by the same people that made Banjo-Kazooie and a lot of the N64 3D platformer games. The soundtrack's made by David Wise, who's obviously did the Donkey Kong Country, Snake Run and Roll, and lots of other iconic games, so really excited to play this. I've heard it gets really hard, but... It really does. Yeah, I've yeah. played it and I gave up, but um, you probably have a bit more patience than me when it comes to platformers, so you might I, really enjoy yeah. it. I mean, yeah, it's like I obviously love the... Donkey Kong Country ones and they can get frustrating but I've managed to beat yeah. them so I'd like to think that it should be alright. We'll it is see. a really solid platformer but it's just like the end one is really really difficult and basically you get more lives the more levels you complete but you basically have to play all of them to make sure you have loads of lives for the last level otherwise it really is impossible it literally is the impossible there um, 
But yeah, you'll probably have more patience than me for that one. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those cheap ones where it's like, we'll make you play all the game, even though you don't have to, but you can't compete completely yeah. without playing all of it. Yeah. So what have you yeah, got we'll next? See. So next uh I'll do the other one that Ant got me for Christmas. Oh, if I don't drop it first. Please don't. <laughs> So it's Galaxy the Void and it's Skulls of the Shogun. I don't really know anything about these ones, but they do look really interesting. So I think it's um, one of them is more like a fighter shooter shoot space. Shoot 'em up, yeah. yeah Galaxy shoot them up like one. a shoot 'em up or a shmup. And the other one's like a turn-based um, strategy game. So yeah, they both look really interesting. They're both indie games, I believe. Yeah, mm, yeah. And both got like really nice artwork on them as well so yeah. yeah i mean i've also got that to play so i imagine we'll play that at the same <laughs> time and see how we get on with it <laughs> so yeah excited to play those ones and next up on your list uh, so next up is oninaki which is a rpg from tokyo rpg factory which is part of square enix i and i'll talk about it bit later played Lost Sphere which is another game they made and really enjoyed it so pick this up um, hopefully I'll get around to playing it some point in the next 10 years was with my RPG backlog that we all know is hilarious <laughs> but yeah really excited I really like um, the artwork style and the combat style of Lost Sphere so hopefully a lot of this is carried over into Aninaki. It's really it was, pretty in style. Yeah it was really cheap as well like I know a lot of RPGs, especially not mainstream ones, don't really reduce in price that much. But I think I got this like twelve pound, which is quite good for a game that's supposedly thirty odd hours of gameplay. Nice, you get your money's worth with that. You do. <laughs> so what have you got? So next up, another one that I got just after Christmas, and I haven't played it. It's still got the price on it. It's Afro Samurai. Um, now this one I don't really know a lot about. I know it's an anime, I believe. Um, but it looks really awesome and really stylized, and it's got you know pretty solid reviews. So I thought it'd be quite an interesting play, trying to build up my PlayStation Three archives a little bit more. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd try with this game. So yeah, excited to play it. It's got a leaflet in it as well, which is actually quite unusual for a PS3 game. They don't often come with leaflets, and yeah, it looks really interesting and stylized. So excited to. So another game that I got is Tomb Raider Chronicles on the Dreamcast. Now I know you can get this one on the PlayStation 1 I believe as yeah. well, um, but I just thought it'd be really interesting to play it on the Dreamcast and also build up my Dreamcast collection a little bit more. Um, it didn't cost very much at all, as you can see inside. It's got just got one disc, but it also comes with the leaflet. So yeah, which is in full colour again, which is also awesome. So yeah, interested to play that and see how it translates onto the Dreamcast. I do think there's quite a few games for the Dreamcast that were originally released on the PS1 that mm. are just much better to play on the Dreamcast. That's one of them. Like, I've got Tomb Raider Chronicles on the PS1 and I know a lot of the older Tomb Raider games don't play that great. So hopefully that's not completely redone it but a bit nicer to play and a bit smoother and things mm. like that. So. I think the Dreamcast is maybe slightly more powerful than the PlayStation oh, one so yeah it definitely plays a lot better and um, there's a lot of games like Rayman 2 for example where that's on multiple platforms but actually the best platform to play it on is actually the Dreamcast. It just looks the best out of all of them. It runs really smoothly and just looks so much nicer than all the other consoles so sometimes it is worth if you have multiple platforms just checking out um, if that game is on other platforms and just seeing if it runs better on another platform and yeah we'll see how this one compares to yep so yeah you up next your last I'll one. do my last one so <clears throat> last one I got was Cloud Punk for the Xbox One um, you can get this on PS4 and Nintendo Switch as well I actually don't know much about the game I just remember there was a lot of hype for it coming out and then also me getting confused with Cyberpunk and Cloudpunk <laughs> being two different games, but I do like the whole sort of cyberpunk, futuristic, aesthetic mm. kind of vibe, so hopefully there'll be a game that I can play in that that actually works. <laughs> um, I mean, I know Cyberpunk's been patched now and is supposedly a lot better, but yeah, I'm just excited to play that. It's been a while since I've actually got any new Xbox One games as well. And again, I know it's on multiple platforms, but generally, if you 
get a game that's on multiple platforms, the Xbox One versions are cheaper. Yeah, generally. generally. And normally if they're on the Switch, the port isn't normally as good. Yeah. Because obviously the Switch isn't as powerful. So I just find if you're getting a kind of more powerful game that's sort of more 3D and has a bigger world, then it's just best to get it on a PlayStation or Xbox platform just because they just never run quite as well on the Switch. So if you have the other option, it's better to do that. But yeah, Powerpunks looks really awesome. I've been watching it for a while, so I'll hopefully give that a play as well at some point. Yeah. So next up, uh, let's see my PlayStation 4 game. <laughs> I got Senran Kagura, and this is Peach, Peach, Peach Splash. Um, anyone who knows about these games knows they're a little bit dirty, basically. <laughs> um, they're pervy Japanese games. I mean, they are what they are. <laughs> um, I just kind of fancied this kind of game again. Sometimes it's nice to play just silly, over-the-top games like this. Um, I did quite enjoy games like Gal Gun, which is a kind of a similar thing. It's just there are some stories there and there are some interesting game mechanics, but it's mostly sort of a vessel to have the perviness. So <laughs> the interesting um, game mechanics are just boobs basically pretty much and zooming in on them and seeing them bounce and stuff but yeah anyway <laughs> but yeah so that's what i got for this one and yeah there's nothing interesting inside it's, it's just the disc but um it's the outside that's interested on that game exactly it's it's very superficial <laughs> <laughs> So last couple of games that I picked up were actually games from Wave Studio and basically they are a publisher and they remaster or make a lot of games for the Dreamcast such as indie games or older games and remaster them for them. So first up is Flea which is an indie game, it's a platformer. Um, it's really cute, this is like the deluxe edition so it comes with the soundtrack inside. And it also comes with a little leaflet, and the art style is really cute. I was on this. Say, I love the art style. The back of the back of the manual is just Strange. quite possibly one of the greatest designs ever. Look at that! <laughs> it's very cute, and it basically sort of it tells you a little bit about the game and the controls. It's like but it's a all cartoony done cartoony manual. It's very cool. It's all done in sort of a comic book style, and yeah, it's just really super cute. Um, I definitely recommend checking them out. They do lots of really interesting games, and if you have a Dreamcast and you want to get something a bit more unique for it, definitely check them out and see what they have in store, because they're always releasing new games. They are. Uh, apparently, I saw a few days ago that they're planning on releasing a new game every month this year for oh, the they? Dreamcast, so nice. I know the, one of the next ones that's coming out, but well, it's not a new game, but it's um, they're bringing out Postal for mm -hmm. the Dreamcast, which is a game which, I can't remember if it got banned, but it was it highly did, controversial yeah. and... Quite gory. Wasn't yeah, it? and very over the top, so that'd be good. All good fun. That'd be fun to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when you look back at some of these games, they're not nearly as bad as other games that are out now and are not controversial. It's just at the time they were, yeah. because people weren't used to it. Angry Man shakes fist at Cloud. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah, definitely check them out. And the other one that I got is Rush Rush Rally Reloaded. God, that was a mouthful. Um, but this is a really fun top-down racer. We've been playing it together. Yeah. Um, I've not played it single player yet, but it's got a really fun multiplayer in it as well. And it's just super fun. Um, it's a you know fairly basic racer. You get to the finish line. There are like some different challenges, like time challenges. Um, but it's just super fun. The music is really sort of 90s, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just super fun. There's a few things like knocking down people and they make silly noises, and it's just. <laughs> um, but yeah, it comes with a leaflet. There's nothing too interesting in there. It's just basically the manual. That um, come with a soundtrack as well, didn't it? This one didn't come with a soundtrack. It did. Oh, it does. Yes, it does come the games, with a soundtrack. The game's still in your Dreamcast. Yes, that's, that's what confused. <laughs> so yeah, it basically comes with a soundtrack as well. I think all of their games now come with soundtracks. Yeah, I know the intro Intrepid Izzy I've got's got the soundtrack with it as yeah. well. Um, so that's really cool because they say they all have OSTs, like original scores and stuff. So that's really mm. exciting. I mean, Rush Rush Rally Reloaded, if you loved the... 16-bit uh, Micro Machines games like on the mm. SNES and uh, Mega Drive, definitely check that out. It's, it plays basically the same, it's just 
really smooth, top down, simplistic racing, but really great fun. Yeah, a lot of fun, definitely. If you're playing it multiplayer as well, it's it's really really good fun. Exactly. But yeah, that is all of our pickups. So next, we'll probably have a little bit of a chat about some games that we've played as well. I think. Yeah. So we thought we'd talk about some of the games that we've played, but first, before we do that, we thought we would have a little bit of a chat about some beers that we've got <laughs> because that's another big thing of a passion of ours is beers basically um and we like to pretend it's um very snobbish but it's just we like drinking alcohol but um <laughs> if you're wondering why there wasn't as many pickups it's because we spent that money on beer instead pretty much yeah we all spent it on yeah just beer and stuff but yeah so i have got yonder um which is a brewery i really enjoy because they do a lot of sours and i'm a big fan of sour beers and this one's called Annie. And it's okay. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> um, and it's a cognac barrel aged saison with plums and spices. It's 6.9%. It smells very, very sort of strong and rummy. Mm, rummy. Oh, that is really nice. Mm. Very strong sort of aged flavour to it. Really nice. And what have you got? Um... I've got uh, Perfect Storm by Vocation, which is a New England pale ale. I just love hazy, hoppy, fruity pale ales, and this is just really nice and easy to drink. <laughs> which is what I like. Yeah, just what I like. <laughs> and Vocation, like obviously the can design's really cool, Sweet. but they have quite a lot of their beers in um, supermarkets now, which is really good because it makes mm. it much easier to get them. Yeah. And yeah, much more accessible than having to go to a beer shop which we know a lot of places don't have so <laughs> they yeah. don't and they tend to be quite expensive as well whereas the supermarket ones tend to be a bit cheaper yeah they're no carling prices but <laughs> it depends if you want to drink your own piss or not <laughs> you'll enjoy this a lot more than your carling exactly yeah cheers to that okay so games we've played in the last couple of months so far what have you been playing? So I don't have a physical copy of it, but the first game I beat this year was Doom 2. Um, I played it on the Switch and it's still every bit as good as when it came out in 1990 old. And yeah, it's just really straightforward. Kill all the bad people and demons and zombies and stuff. And it's just fast paced for an action. It's really simple. There's no pretense or over the top eccentric plots about it it's just you're saving the world from how demons <laughs> you're killing and, all the bad guys yeah. and that's it really and yeah it's just really really simple and for a game that's coming up to being 30 mm -hmm. years old in the next couple of years it still plays and is still more enjoyable than a lot of the first person shooters that are made now so yeah, really enjoyed it. Solid games. Mm. So first up on my list, I have, actually haven't played that many games. I've only completed two so far this year. Um, first up was A Hat in Time. This is a really cute little 3D platformer game. Um, what I really enjoyed about it is that there's several different worlds and all of those worlds are completely different in their style but also the sort of platforming mechanics and the missions in those worlds are completely different so there's no real repeat of it. There was just lots of really fun mechanics to the game, I thought the art style was really fun and cute, there was lots of different character styles in there that were just insane, there's a girl with a moustache and like you go through like a mafia world and then there's some owls who are like detectives and it's just all over the place but it's really fun and wacky and it's definitely a lot of fun there were a few things that I didn't like about it I did find that some of the platforming required you to be a bit precise but the game just didn't let you do it so sometimes there was a bit it was a bit frustrating but overall really enjoyed this and you can pick it up quite cheap um, I don't know what other platforms it's on but I would maybe try to avoid the switch because I just felt like it wasn't optimised as well for the Switch and it sort of was a little bit pixely at times. So maybe try and find it for a different platform. But yeah, I would really recommend this game. Yeah. So the second game I beat this year was Yay. Yakuza Kiwami. Obviously Lydia's a massive Yakuza fan, so she eventually managed to wear me down into down. Play, yeah, <laughs> playing it. Um, but obviously it was worth it, it's a really good game. I just loved the whole the city it's set in um, or like the area of the city it's set in I just found it was a really fleshed out world 
I know it's only a small map in terms of comparing it to like Grand Theft Auto and stuff, but it just looked like everything was so well designed in that. I love that it offsets the really serious heavy plot with just absolutely stupid side quests. <laughs> the fact you can become champion of radio controlled cars and stuff like that. <laughs> That's such just a good after you just after you've spent the whole day battering hundreds of people to within an inch of their lives and stuff. It's just it's just so bizarre, but it works really well that it kind of takes the serious edge off it. Mm. Obviously, I'll try and play Kawami 2 in the next sort of few years. <laughs> I mean, sometime soon. Sometime soon, yeah, definitely. It was, it was one where I played it and it really gave me the, the urge to play more of the game. So if you haven't played it, definitely recommend it. As does Lydia at last, obviously. <laughs> obviously, because I made him play it. But yeah, yeah I'm glad you enjoyed it, because it's one of those sometimes when you really enjoy a game and you recommend it to people, you're a bit like, oh no, have I talked it up too much? But <laughs> you basically, all the things that I love about the game are things that you said you really enjoyed about yeah, the definitely. game as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're so good. Definitely play them if you haven't already. And if you have, well done for having good taste. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely play the Kiwami version over the original because it's just so much it's so pretty yeah like the it, it's even though the ps2 one's good kiwami is just like stunning the game world it's yeah so, so well done it's a complete remake of it it is the same game but they've completely remade it and the ps2 one's good um but obviously it's limitations of the console and also it's got terrible terrible english voice acting in it <laughs> which you can't turn off you can't do um japanese subtitles or anything um so yeah if you want to play the original one and compare go for it but definitely play the kwami ones first if you want to get into the series but yeah next up is the second game and well i've only completed two games this year so far so the other game was sakuna of rice and ruin I sunk about 45 to 50 hours into this by the end of it and don't regret a single one of those. Really, really, really enjoyed this game. It's quite simplistic, but it has a lot of depth to the elements of the game. So basically it is a kind of hack and slash combat. Um, you have this sort of world and the world has different levels in it. Um, it's not a kind of free roam open world game by any means at all. So the other mechanic of the game is that you go back to your home base and you farm for rice and that's got quite a lot of depth to it as well. Um, there's different stages and it's all based on real time, well not real time but the time within the game so there's different seasons and different things appear during different seasons. Um, it's kind of a typical RPG where you sort of collect different resources to upgrade your weapons and upgrade your abilities but it's all linked in with the farming as well. And I just thought it did it so well. The art style was super pretty too. And yeah, I just can't really recommend it enough. It's pretty simplistic in sort of the story and the combat, like I said, but I really, really enjoyed it. And it just completely like enveloped all of my time. And yeah, I just didn't regret a single second of it. So definitely check it out. I mean, uh, when I was watching you play, it just looked super cute. Yes. And like the artwork style, but like, I find a lot of RPGs can be drag especially mm. if there's things you have to repeat but it just kind of looked quite therapeutic in that one yeah. also there's a dog in it you can stroke so yeah that's you can pick a up a little point. dog and hug them and it's super yeah. cute there's lots of little things like that and details to the game that i just really enjoyed and yeah there was quite a lot of times when you had to go back and do similar levels again to collect different resources but at no point did i ever feel bored of doing it because the combat was so much fun and it was so smooth and it didn't feel, even though sometimes you were kind of grinding in the game, it didn't feel like you were doing that. And that to me is a, a sign of a really good game. So definitely check it out. Yeah. So the next game I beat, which I mentioned earlier, was Lost Sphere, which I played on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it's an RPG from Tokyo RPG Factory, which is part of Square Enix. I believe they've made three now. This is the middle one. I Am Setsuna is the first one, but I've not played yet. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's got a great combat mechanic in it. The way the turn-based battles work um, is really good. All the characters kind of have unique features, so you kind of have to build and manage the characters to kind of complement your battle style. The only, only thing that really frustrated me was with the plot. The plot was great, but they managed to ruin it with the ending that just kind of left me thinking, 
I still don't understand what's fully gone on <laughs> or the point in the game was and it just felt a bit deflating at the end they made this really good game this really good story and you finish it and you're just kind of like eh well I don't really I finished the game but I don't really know the ending it was just yeah. a bit frustrating I remember yeah. you really enjoying it but then you got to the end and you just like like what? I don't yeah. understand what happened. It just, yeah, <laughs> it's just sort of like I don't understand. I don't get the point of what's happened, and it just left me feeling a bit sad. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully, when I play on Inaki, it's they've addressed that problem in that game, and they have an ending at the end of the game, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's really. I kind of do find that if a game ends badly, it kind of sours your whole experience oh, of the game. Even if the game was amazing up until that point, it's kind of like, well, the ending is kind of what I played it for. So if that's bad, then, well, what was the point of all of that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's just it was just upsetting because it was so, so well written and mm -hmm. everything up to the point. And the plot twists weren't ridiculous that had happened up to that point. They were all quite well done and thought out and stuff and then yeah it just got to that point and I was just a bit like oh well it almost almost ruined it I mean I'd recommend it and see what you think about the ending but also I have warned you <laughs> you've been pre-warned mm. <laughs> so next up on my list so I have started playing but haven't finished uh, Vagrant Story so I'm trying to play through a retro game at the same time as playing a modern game. So Vagrant Story is one I've had for quite a while, paid a bit more for it, it's a fairly pricey game, but really, really, really enjoying this so far. Apart from the fact I had a frustrating point where I forgot, I thought I was saving the game, but turns out you have to hover over a save point and then manually save. So if you play this game, remember that. <laughs> But other than that, really, really enjoying it. The combat is really unique. You basically attack different parts of the enemy's body and you sort of have different magic attacks and stuff. And I've just started to unlock all of those. Um, just really, really interesting. And the art style was really nice. It's really st super stylized and it's kind of that hybrid of 3D where it's a little bit pixely. Um, but it actually works really well because you get a lot more detail with it and it just looks really stunning as well. It's kind of sort of a 3D top down um, is the style of the game. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying it and really enjoying the combat and not finding it so frustrating. Apparently it's not too grindy either. So that's one of the things I don't like about some of the older RPGs or even modern ones is that they can feel really grindy but haven't got that with this so far, so I'm really excited to continue playing it. It's definitely one of the PS1 RPGs that gets forgotten about. I know people rave about it, but considering it was just the one game in the series, and obviously Squaresoft, well Squaresoft then, but Square Enix have made so much out of other ones, it's one that almost needs a, a reboot or a remaster, it would work really well, but it's still good even for the PlayStation 1 standards. I mean, it's one of those is I didn't really hear about it or didn't know anything about it. And it was just that when I was asking people um, sort of on Instagram for recommendations of games, this is one of the ones that came out a couple of times. Um, but you just don't really hear much about it. So I feel like it is a bit of a cult classic yeah. almost. Um, but it is really good. So I do recommend trying to find it if you can. Definitely. So the next one I played and beat, which was a fairly short game but really enjoyable, is Turnip Boy Commits Tax Invasion. <laughs> I bought this just based upon the ridiculous name alone, um, but it's a really cutesy, top-down RPG sort of 16-bit Zelda style. So if you enjoyed Link to the Past on the SNES or Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, it's a similar sort of style to that. It's almost a kind of carbon copy of it where you go into the dungeons and different dungeons you unlock new skills that allow you to get to other areas of the world and stuff but it's just so silly and just loved it it's not it's so fun yeah it's not difficult in any way it just has the most fun like bouncy upbeat music the plot's silly it jokes about so much stuff in the game and industry and things like that and just life in general and I just love the mechanic that you have to collect all these documents but they only count that you've collected them if you rip them up basically <laughs> so yeah it's really good and um, if you're after a couple of hours of silliness definitely recommend it mm. I mean I got the physical copy 
but I'm not sure it got a proper release everywhere in the world because mine's in German. Not that that's a bad thing. It still plays in English and obviously the Switch is region free. So if you play this on your Switch, it should come up in every language that you use, I hope. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely recommend it. Yeah, it does look really good. I was watching you play it quite yeah. a few times. It's just so like super stylized and silly and it's just one of those games that especially if you've been playing maybe a game with a really heavy plot it's nice to kind of like cleanse the palette with yeah. something funny and after playing yakuza and lost fear that were two sort of very heavy story yeah, games well. it was nice just to play as a turnip yeah <laughs> just be a turnip <laughs> just be a turnip <laughs> literally mm. so that's why you playing what's the so last one you're the playing? last one that i'm playing which i only started playing about a week ago but i think i've already sunk about 20 hours into it which is quite something for me because I've just started a new job and I've been really busy and stuff so that sort of is a testament to how good it is, is Spiritfarer. Um, I had this one for a couple of months and I heard quite a lot of hype about it but I didn't really understand what it was about. I just saw the art style and thought wow that looks really really beautiful and it's kind of got this um, 2D style to it but it's all sort of hand drawn looking. It's really, really beautiful colour palettes that are in it, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And there's no combat in it. Um, it's basically a kind of collecting game. Um, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's kind of similar to Animal Crossing in a way. But it does have a story. Basically, you are the spirit fairer, so you go and collect people's spirits and help them pass over into the next life or the afterlife, as such. And it's really beautiful. It's really touching you go around to collect different resources. That's the main point of the game, but you also, you live on this kind of boat and you expand the boat and you upgrade it and you build new things onto it. And it's just really so beautifully done for a game that is really just mostly about collecting resources. It's just so beautiful and it's got so much charm to it and it's so relaxing to play. The music's really, really beautiful and relaxing to listen to. And it's just really nice to come back from the end of a long day and not really think too hard about a game and just enjoy playing it and that's what I'm enjoying most about this game so I definitely do recommend it. Um, I did show this one on my pickup a little while ago and the physical game comes with some really cute little postcards so you can see like all the different worlds that are in it. As yeah, you can really see they're just... Yeah, they're so pretty. I mean, you've been watching me. I was just it about and... to say, I've you've been playing it, and I've been playing on my Vita, and actually just stopped playing to watch yeah. the screen because it's that sort of pretty and nice to look at, and it's just like, it really oh is. wow, and that's just not even playing it; that's just watching it. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. And all the characters are really sort of you feel quite invested in the characters yeah. and they're really sweet and you can hug them and you feed them and yeah it's just really nice to play in. it's just basically a really modern tamagotchi <laughs> pretty much yeah. with a moving story too yeah. but yeah really recommend this one i mean going from the cute way of leading people into the afterlife the other game i beat this year was hades mm -hmm. so hades is a roguelike game where you have to escape the underworld. You play as Zagreus, who's Hades' son, and he's trying to escape the underworld. And basically, you just have to keep trying to escape. And every time you do, you get new resources to unlock new skills, and you can get a little bit further. But I find a lot of roguelike games is just sort of the repetition just gets really boring. Whereas with this, you've learned so much about all the characters and the way it links to the Greek mythology in it is so well done mm. because it's pretty much bang on accurate with what the Greek mytho mythology was with all the Greek gods but it doesn't take itself too seriously mm. so the main characters Agrius is going around calling Achilles mate and Cerberus you can buy him toys to play with and <laughs> stuff like that but it's still yeah and it's just super stylized it's almost like a hand-drawn cell shaded mm kind of style the soundtrack is just absolutely immense because it goes from like ambient industrial stuff to full-on metal for some of the boss fights i mean i think i ended up playing this for like over 50 hours mm. to get through and get the true ending of the game um, and yeah just really emotionally invested in it and you find find as you play through you think you're gonna like some of the the greek gods and then turns out you like some of the other ones more when you learn more about them but yeah mm. it's really good 
sounds like it's really well written and it is really beautiful to look at as well like it's got that kind of really nice hand-drawn style to it and it's really stylized with the colors as well and it was really stunning to watch i enjoyed watching yeah. you play it just that i mean it's made by super giant games who did bastion mm -hmm. um transistor i think pyo was another one mm -hmm. and they're all sort of similar not in terms of gameplay well gameplay may be so but that isometric viewpoint and it's just yeah they're all just so unique but so beautiful and the way the soundtrack the stories work they're just so well done mm. so they need to make another game now <laughs> so yeah definitely check out those ones yeah then. but yeah that's pretty much all the games that we've played so far like i said it's not been many for me this year you've played quite a lot more games than yeah. i have um still not as many as i had done this time last year but i've definitely played a lot of bigger games like you know I'd say Hades of some 50 hours into it, mm. Lost Sphere and Yakuza quite a lot as well. So. Yeah, I'm definitely enjoying playing a lot more longer games this year so far and just uh, last year I played a lot of really short indie games which was really nice but sometimes just felt like I was playing so much all the time and wasn't really investing a lot into one game so it's been really nice to just sort of invest a lot of time into one or two games and just really really enjoy exploring their worlds and stuff. So yeah, that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about our pickups and the games that we've played. I will leave all my social media links down below and I'll also leave links to Ant's social media and podcast as well if you want to check his out. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about our pickups and plays of this month. And also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to help me grow further on this channel as well. But in the meantime, hope to see you again soon. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>